want to welcome everybody to today's event and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to cover some of the new products that have been added to Interface's extensive catalog. Our guest uh, presenters today are Ken Bishop and Brian Peters, with a couple of people filling in for any backup here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today's event will be recorded. We'll be providing a recorded uh, link for everybody that uh, is registered for this event. We'll also be using our chat feature during the event to answer questions. If you have questions, please be sure to use that feature and we'll try to get to them at the end. We do have a lot to cover today. So Brian, Ken, are you guys ready? Let's kick ready. this off. Thanks, Jamie. Um... First, I, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining today. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, our newer products, talk about solutions, talk about applications, uh, uh, and also appreciate everyone taking the time to join on that. Uh, we typically try to balance these webinars with uh, you know, mostly technical, mostly application, and then a little bit of product mixed in there. This one's going to be uh, really focusing on the products and some of the benefits around those products and how those uh, create additional or new opportunity on the application side or use case side. So uh, we're going to be uh, kicking off just general review of the catalog. We'll touch on some of the newer load cells and then touch on torque transducers, multi-axis, uh, a little deeper on load pins, tension links, uh, use cases around those. Quite a bit on the new instrumentation side. This is an area we're seeing a lot of growth and then uh, revisit accessories. Uh, and then system customization is also an area where we're doing more and more work to help customers provide complete turnkey solutions, taking the full responsibility on making sure that as delivered works as expected. Uh, and then just cover again general uh, general testing tips when you start planning for testing, excuse me, planning tips when you need to develop some test protocols. All right, Jamie, next slide. All right, catalog. So uh, over the last 56 years, Interface has developed a, a very broad catalog. Uh, we started with uh, you know, some of our trademarked uh, specialties, such as low profile pancake load cells, everyone knows and loves, uh, as well as our mini line, uh, expanded with precision. Uh, and then from there, different form factors, different solutions, uh, torque instrumentation, load pins, like we're gonna talk about in detail, multi-axis, digital instrumentation, wireless, complete calibration systems, uh, and then all the accessories necessary to support that. So in the last 56 years, I think we've developed well over 40,000 different SKUs. And believe it or not, we're still adding probably a good two a day on average. Uh, so we're not slowing down much uh, on creating new and or customized solutions for uh, all of our customers out there. Next slide. So how do we develop all these new products, new solutions? Well, a lot of it is uh, driven from our customer base, uh, from some of their requirements, but we're also seeing trends in industry uh, where basically people are looking for more data. Uh, and with the developments of and capabilities on the digital side and the instrumentation side, uh, we've, we've added quite a bit more in terms of either what we need to support or where we can help push uh, development and advancement as well. So uh, wireless in particular, uh, been a big, uh, a whole broad product family for us that uh, we continue to integrate into more and more sensing solutions. Next slide. So 2023 was a, a big year for Interface. Uh, through our first acquisition, uh, we've essentially expanded uh, quite a bit of, of uh, product that we've been selling and supporting internally, uh, or excuse me, uh, for the last 10 years and brought this internal with full engineering support uh, to be able to further customize and uh, further support these markets. So in particular, load pins, load shackles, tension links, uh, full range of additional ATEX capabilities, submersible and stainless steel, which has really pushed our uh, portfolio into additional ruggedization and uh, higher IP ratings than people known interface for in the past. New load cells, Ken? Great, yeah, well, you've got some exciting new load cells we'd like to introduce to you, starting with our model ITCA. Um, to start out, it's a stainless steel construction, so a very rugged product comes standard with an IP66 environmental protection. But what's great about these types of products is uh, we can also make them IP67 or submersible. So uh, it, it puts us in a, in a nice place uh, for rugged environment usage. You can see the capacity range goes from 1 to 150 metric tons or about 330K. Uh, tension and compression uh, 
operation comes standard with a compression cowl. And then there's some of the typical applications you can see down below. And we'll go to the next slide and talk a little bit more specifically. This is a wave energy generator. So basically what happens is the, uh, this is uh, like a buoy in, in an ocean. And as the waves move, the uh, buoy goes up and down and you can see there's a weight underneath that buoy and our model ITCA in between. So it's really performing what's like uh, called the mooring application where we're holding it down, but also as that buoy moves up and down, it spins a wheel and generates energy and then can be stored and used and sent off to other places to be used. Um, this uh, application, you know, if you're around water, salt water, uh, you'll want to have uh, at least an IP67 rating. But if you wanted to submerse it, uh, we could make this product submersible for you. So uh, as you can see, some of the use cases, submersible tension, which we're showing you here, wireline monitoring, outdoor testing. Uh, it fits in tight spaces because it's a narrow design. Uh, and of course, we're showing the wave energy generator, mooring, structural test, and many other applications, as you can see there below. Let's go to our next product, ICPA. So this is a compression-only stainless steel load cell. And this one goes up in high, very high capacity, up to 1,000 metric ton, about 2.2 million, uh, with the stainless steel construction and comes standard with IP67. So um, you know, it, it's in a smaller type package, uh, can come with handles if needed. If somebody wants to, uh, you know, uh, use it in a portable type setting, depending on the capacity. And as we stated on the uh, previous product, the TCA, uh, it can be submersible as well. Uh, of course, we have uh, a number of different options we can do with the uh, wiring, and integrated signal conditioning. Uh, also, TEDS is available on this or any of the load cells that we can provide you from interface. And then some really neat options that come with this is uh, there's a dome top and a, a loading cap and a mounting base that can be used uh, depending on your application. So it'll make it easier for mounting in those custom applications you're working with. And of course, any customizing that you need done, we can do as well. Let's go to the next slide. So in this case, we're showing a tank uh, with uh, model ICPAs located around the body. Basically, we can connect those to a what our model is, JB104 uh, junction box and connect it to a indicator like our 480, which is a, a large display and uh, the combination of the load cell junction box and indicator can be used to monitor the weight as it's either being loaded or as things are being subtracted from the tank and everything is set up to um, work in a uh, uh, has not hazardous but in a uh, rugged environment um, other use cases for this type of product is of course compression testing you could stick this load cell inside of a uh, a rig that you might have, maybe a press, uh, and do measuring on that. Uh, of course, a number of these used together could uh, work with our model 920i, and we could do a center of gravity measurement if that's needed. And then you can see some other applications that we have there, hydraulic press, pile force measurement, structural proof testing, and jack force measurement. Next slide. Next product is our, you'll probably recognize it, our regular model 1200 series. But what we've done with this is added an IO-Link uh, product to it. So we're basically communicating directly from the load cell to IO-Link protocol. And so I, if you're not familiar with IO-Link, it's used um, to network um, different types of devices like a load cell into a uh, let's say a process or a system that you have in your factory. And the IO link allows um, the communication to occur between a device like a load cell and its master so that 
Um, let's say you want to uh, do some controlling of an operation, you can do that through a PLC, and the IL link will talk directly to that. And also, if you want to go back and look at what you've done using this device, you can see um, you know, some of the cycles that have happened, uh, the processes, um, and the results that you have, and maybe go back and do some adjustments on that process. Uh, obviously resulting in reduced cycle time, time and improved machine uptime. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is showing a press type application. Uh, uh, one example could be maybe you're pressing one part into another and you'll want to have a certain force uh, uh, generated by the, let's say, the uh, control system. And so you can uh, you know, do some uh, actual pressing of one material into the other, uh, optimize your process, analyze your results uh, through your uh, IO-Link software, and then optimize it, and then go right into production and, and have successful results. So, um, again, we've talked about machine and system integration. Uh, you can have... Uh, a lot of different devices on the IO link. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you can monitor the health of uh, some of your uh, items or uh, load cells in this case that are on the on the system and then use it for all these different applications here. Uh, machine testing, industrial automation, works with the actuators. And of course it is a digital uh, product so it works in in digital environments and of course for an OEM system solution as well. Next slide. So this is our way check. Uh, you're probably familiar with it if you bought from Interface before. One of the key characteristics of it is it uh, has a high safe side load. So if you're in an area that has seismic uh, concerns, you want to make sure that you use this particular mount. Um, what we've done differently with it is we're able now to connect it to our internal three-wire uh, amplifier or to IO-Link, as we just explained. So this will, you know, have all the same functionality and, and you'll have the same confidence you have in the interface load cell. It's just a different way to connect up for either long runs, if you use the amplified version, if you have a long cable run, or if you have a noisy environment. Uh, then you'll want to use the amplifier. And of course, if you want to do the you know, process improvements or connect everything together to run with a PLC, you use the IO link option. Next slide. Uh, this is a platform using uh, four of our way check modules. Um, it can connect directly to our 1280 uh, using an analog out input or we could connect directly to a customer system, uh, providing an analog output if their uh, system, which a lot of um, DACs use an analog input. So we would have our three wire amplifier in here. Then, you know, as your uh, as this uh, company or these performers are uh, setting up their stage and practicing their routines and they can monitor the kind of activity that will happen on the stage and make sure it's safe so that no one will get hurt. And of course, uh, this type of a product is used in scales uh, with this three wire amplifier. It's great for uh, areas with high electrical noise, um, of course, weighing applications. Um, and then of course, we're demonstrating here uh, performance, uh, structural weighing, and then of course, tank weighing and, and center of gravity as well for this type of product. Next slide. Next one is our SSLP. So this is kind of a nice uh, addition to our low profile family. Um, that's 100% stainless steel construction. Uh, comes standard with an IP67 rating. Um, it, it uh, you know, you can have uh, normal TEDS options if you need it, or uh, a nice feature is ATEX. So, We've had a uh, number of customers need an ATEX version, uh, stainless steel, low profile load cell. This is the one that you want to pick. Uh, and uh, options for amplified and multi bridges as well. Uh, let's go to the next slide. 
This particular application we're showing here is a, a logging truck way bridge. So basically what they, they're doing is they're chopping down some uh, lumber and uh, having the truck drive across a platform that has maybe six or eight of these particular load cells. Usually this kind of uh, weighing is done in a rugged environment, something up in a mountain maybe, uh, exposed to some weather. So the IP67 rating um, comes in handy for this type of environment. What we've done in this application is connected it to a wireless uh, receiver transmitter, and then that broadcasts the signal to our um, WTS LD2 large wireless display. It also it simultaneously transmits the same information over to our handheld display and can be logged simultaneously onto our Log100 software with the WTS BS6 connected to your PC. So if you buy our WTS system, then you get the software uh, along with the base station. And as you can see, it's tension and compression testing in harsh environments. Um, you know, works in scale, submersible. And one thing that's really great about this product too is we can help you put together some uh, custom uh, base plates if needed, even top plates, um, so that it might match into your uh, particular application a little bit better. Next slide. So these are pillow block load cells. So as you can see, there's a, a pillow block bearing sitting on top of each uh, displayed load cell there. Our capacities go from 5 to 30 kN. Um, these particular ones we're showing are a single axis virgin, version, but we can also supply two and three axis versions uh, based on a request. Uh, they come standard of, with an IP65 moisture protection and they're compatible with a brand INA pillow block bearing. So um, there's two different spacings usually for each of the different capacities, depending on the size pillow block that you're currently using or choosing to use. Uh, ruggedized aluminum or galvanized tool steel uh, based on the environment. Uh, next slide. Yeah, this here we're showing an application um, of a biomass conveyor belt. So um, these kind of load cells with the bearings together work well in a in a uh, conveyor type situation. Um, you can connect these directly to a product like our 920i indicator, where we can you know seat each individual weight for each pillow block and also sum the total weight that might be on that particular belt. And you can see we're moving it um, product from one place to another. We can also uh, catch the travel of the material as it moves down the roller rollers. Um, you can do uh, roller compression as we're showing here, web tension measurements, uh, use it to do some machine monitoring, um, biomass as we're showing, conveyor belts, axle weighing, rail line uh, monitoring. So it's a good um, fit maybe with a modification to possibly uh, weigh some uh, rail lines, which we're doing for some uh, customers. Um, and uh, car wash and food and beverage conveyor belts. Next slide. Um, next uh, two items are some additions to our uh, ATEX product. Um, of course, uh, anybody who um, works with uh, explosion, explosive environments knows that you have to have qualified installation uh, technicians involved in your project, but the good news is, is that we have a full line of products, including this 3450, which is a new um, rod-in style uh, that can work into different hazardous environments. Of course, you would need to tell us which environment you're going to place this load cell into. We would uh, check with our engineering department, make sure that we're quoting you back something that'll work or telling you which is the highest level this product will go into. You would evaluate that with your engineering team and then make a choice on whether this is the right product or not for that application. Next slide. Yeah, so this one's a low profile version. Uh, so last one's a rod end. This one's a low profile version. 
what's different about this one is it's a compression uh, style with a, a load loading spherical radius on the top. But again, it's uh, you know internally uh, amplified four to twenty milliamp two wire, so it's loop powered, uh, made especially for this type of an environment. Carries all the uh, ATEX uh, uh, qualifications uh, you need, and again, followed the same steps. Work with our application engineers, our regional sales directors. Uh, make sure it matches up to your environment, and of course. Um, you know, this would work the same as any of our standard low profiles. Next slide. Got to hand it over to Brian. All right. Thanks, Ken. So on the torque side of things, uh, T18. So this is uh, in addition to a very popular torque transducer that we sell, the T8 series. Uh, very similar in that it delivers uh, the fantastic reliability and performance of a contact less rotary torque sensor. Uh, albeit at a much lower price point. Uh, the unique thing here is that this one is available with uh, integral speed measurement. So uh, T8 uh, was not able to offer that, uh, but the T18 now brings that to the table. So uh, it's available 10 to 100 newton meter range, and uh, it still delivers a, a very, uh, very competitive 0.25% total error. So very good value with this and now makes it a lot easier and not having to use a separate encoder in your test in your test stand setup. So next slide. Uh, so here it's shown, uh, well, use cases, we'll start there. It really, this is a great choice for uh, any torque testing, um, anything that's spinning, anything that you want to monitor the speed as well as the uh, torque during the test. Uh, so this is going to become, I think, again, one of our uh, very popular sensors, just like the T8 has has been historically. Um, here's an application just showing it hooked up via torque couplings, of course. I always recommend uh, requesting and having us quote and provide torque couplings with any rotary torque sensor. Uh, can even do it for reaction as well. Uh, but this is the best way to ensure that uh, the sensor bearings are are going to see the loads they should and, the, and not see any loads that they should not. Uh, but here's a test uh, test example of uh, automotive vacuum pump, rotary pump, uh, utilizing torque couplings hooked up, and then of course running through our SI USB four, uh, where it can take the um, not only the torque signal but also that speed measurement that's integral to the sensor and give you that torque versus speed plot all combined in synchronized data. So, uh, but other applications could be uh, you know optimization of windmill. Uh, bearings and such. Uh, we're seeing more and more efficiency requests to, to try to eke out every little bit of performance in any product out there. Uh, small scale hydropower turbine generators. Uh, we have um, a lot of interest also in um, how we can capture any energy, even if it's in a stream, uh, small rivers. Uh, if there's any kinetic energy out there, let's let's capitalize on it. Uh, and then just general R&D, uh, in this case, a dental handpiece, uh, spinning spinning handpiece, just wanting to, to verify that it's working as it should during uh, research and development phases. So I talked earlier about uh, industry uh, standard components or uh, standards out there driving some additional new product. And here's an example of a uh, flange reaction torque sensor. Uh, so yes, this cable will wrap up if you try to spin it. Uh, but this one was designed specifically to adapt to C-face motors, drive units, uh, where they share that very unique and standardized four-hole flange uh, mounting arrangement. So uh, this is also really nice in that uh, it has the pass-through, which can allow for either shaft pass-through, maybe cable, hydraulic lines. Uh, we've had different customers use it in different ways just because of that, that nice, unique, uh, large ID that it offers. Uh, but because this is designed to work with C-Face motors, uh, it also has a pretty high safe bending load capability. Uh, normally, you'd want to isolate sensors to only see the designated uh, measurement axis. So in this case, just the reaction torque. But given how uh, these motors are, are going to be mounting right via the face, you're going to have that resulting overhung moment as the, uh, the sensor now has to support that motor. So they're designed to uh, not only tolerate, but also reject that. Um, and still deliver pretty good performance. I think we're in the 0.1% range on this. So, uh, also, uh, sorry. Also, of course, we can we can offer a high level output as it said there in the last bullet point. So, whether you want a millivolt per volt or uh, if you want 10 volt, for example, that that enclosure would uh, allow us to incorporate that. Uh, so, like I said earlier, use cases are are pretty unique in that it accommodates through shaft 
test setups. Um, real popular for whether it's motory or rotary actuator qualification. Uh, I think rebuild, for example, uh, after you rebuild something, put it back on test stand, make sure it's working or, or new end of line manufacturing. <coughs> really any test benches where you want to measure the reaction torque. So uh, you can even mount this uh, on the back end of the motor if, if, if you want to through adapter plates or, or other things. So it can be in line or it can be on the back side of the drive or brake really uh, of a test setup if, if you'd prefer. Uh, but again, mostly because of that ID, it works really well if you have a shaft driving through, uh, again, your drive side and your, your brake. Uh, applications can vary. Uh, really, any any reaction torque uh, opportunity is is uh, a game here, uh, but it works well for conveyors. Uh, if you want to again get this sandwiched in line with your with your motor, whether it's for optimization or system health monitoring, for example, get early warning on a, on a hiccup there on the conveyor. Um, actually, have uh, installed these in the uh, the pictured application of the dam spillway. So, I want to be able to monitor that the gate is moving as expected and that there aren't any hiccups or uh, anything that's impeding the expected motion. So this gives much better measurement than what may be done historically through motor current measurement. You're getting a direct torque measurement now to know if something's changing from what is expected. But uh, but other applications, pumps, gearboxes, uh, fans, uh, power tongs, anything that you want to be able to measure that reaction torque, this is a good fit. It's uh, relatively short, and again, that ID opens up a lot of uh, a lot of integration possibilities. Next, all right. Now we're going to talk about some multi-axis sensors. We got a few new ones to share with you. First one here is our AT one hundred and four. So this is a two-axis sensor. It has reaction torque and measures axial force at the same time simultaneously. So reaction torque doesn't spin. So you can see the capacities. It's a lower capacity unit. So we're doing, uh, let's say, some light testing uh, using this type of a device. It's a uh, very short length and, of course, reliable, durable, and uh, has a side cable exit, so it doesn't uh, you know, get in the way of your application. Next slide. So here's a picture of an application. In this case, we've got a cable under test. What we're trying to do here is use a actuator to gently pull on the cable and see when it, uh, what kind of, you know, a, what do I call it, a calculated force does as the cable tries to untwist. And so we're able to do that with this uh, torque transducer. We could connect this to our 9320 indicator, uh, but best suited for it would be our SI USB 4 because we've got two axes. It'd be better than uh, connecting it up to a, a single uh, instrument or two single instruments. So the SI USB 4, as Brian um, mentioned, would probably be the best instrument to connect this to. Um, like, like I said before, it's good with uh, low range combined force and torque. Um, you can do some friction characterizing uh, by using something like this as long as it's a low capacity. Um, and then, of course, uh, some of the applications can be uh, in some kind of assembly where you're doing, uh, you know, force and torque uh, measurements while you're uh, doing the installation and uh, automotive industry, tooling, uh, tool engineering, and special mechanical engineering. Next slide. Next one we're going to mention here is our AT105. So this is a rotating torque transducer that can do uh, force measurement as well. So again, it's a lower capacity unit, uh, can go up to 3,000 RPMs, uh, measuring the force and the torque, uh, contact lists, like, much like our T-series torque transducers. And so the same type of transmission, a digital signal transmission uh, occurs as well. Uh, Maintenance-free because there's no brushes or things like that, and simple handling and assembly. Let's go to the next slide. So in this case, uh, in this uh, app note, we're showing a small wheel or bearing uh, that's spinning. And we're also looking to see, uh, measure the force. We can measure the 
uh, RPM and the torque that's being exhibited during the testing. And we're connected to our SI USB 4 that can take all those measurements simultaneously and display them on your PC. So, you know, we can do thrust bearing testing. Um, of course, having uh, one transducer that can do it all simplifies your test configuration. And of course, having an instrument that goes along with it, like our SI USB 4, can synchronize all of those measurements at the same time. Uh, can do pump testing and uh, master key systems as well. Next slide. And this is our new three axis sensor. So you're, if you're familiar with our product line, we usually have a flat pancake type uh, cell that's in a, we call it a square shape. Uh, this one here is more in a, a cylindrical or round shape. Um, allows for some higher capacities in the Z axis as opposed to the X and Y. Um, they're all three independent bridges, so um, they work just like three separate load cells, so they're pretty easy to use with uh, any kind of instrumentation that can take a millivolt per volt input. Um, we have the capacities from 10 kN all the way up to 500 kN. Uh, has low crosstalk, temperature compensated, and then these work great with our BSC4A, which is a amplifier that uh, takes individual outputs. So each one of the three outputs could be amplified and sent to your control system or our BSC4D, which connects to these and go, can go straight to a PC, basically a PC interface module, log, graph, and display all three channels simultaneously. So um, nice product to have. Let's take a look at the app note. So this is a metal press cutting uh, or a metal cutting application. So as the saw cuts through the piece of material, you can see the three axis load cell on the table and it's measuring the amount of force. Sometimes if you cut too fast, you can create large burrs. Um, you can damage the material. So uh, it becomes important to really uh, measure the force, dial in the process so that you don't hurt uh, the material you're working on or create new problems, let's say, as you're doing that work. Uh, in this case, uh, we've got it hooked to our BX8 HD44, so that BX8 can take samples at a, a rate of four, uh, 48,000 samples a second and then feed that directly to a PC. Uh, it also can give you an analog output simultaneously to take it back to your system. So if you're trying to run some kind of a control system that uh, has uh, feedback to the saw, um, you could do it that way, or you could monitor it visually through the BX8 and the we um, call it our Blue DAC software, which is really nice software to uh, not only uh, monitor, measure, but you can go back and analyze uh, your test results. And you can see we um, you can do machine testing with this product, uh, monitor equipment, uh, do some kind of research course multi-axis measurements and then um, robotics is a, a big usage for this aerospace is, is uh, any kind of machine building um, uh, biochemical and healthcare prosthetics next slide and this is our 6adf series so this is a six axis load cell uh, one of the key features of it is it has a DIN flange. So this DIN flange is pretty standard in the uh, robotics uh, field. So a lot of robotics um, uh, products and robots uh, use this so it can bolt right up to it. Uh, it makes it easy to use. It can be put in line um, using that DIN flange. And uh, again, it measures six axes uh, with a number of different ranges. Uh, you can see uh, from one Newton meter all the way up to 60 Newton meter and 20 kN up to 1.2 kN. A big feature is the hole in the center. So if you need to run, you know, lines through it or shafts through it, through it you can do that. Uh, it's a matrix product. 
so we recommend it be used with our BX8 because uh, you, um, our BX8 can do the 36 term coefficient matrix very simply so that you basically get um, six outputs, one for each axis that this is measuring and get a scaled analog output as well. Uh, and um, you can see uh, on the next application, let's go to that next one, yeah, where it's coupled with a BX8. So this is a, a robotic, uh, I don't want to call it a simulation uh, where the um, six axis load cell would be uh, located near the elbow. And so if the as the robot is uh, performing a repair operation or doing some kind of a, a force strike with the hammer that's in its hand, you would get the feedback of 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 the result of the force that um, showed in the elbow. And the BX8 would capture that uh, measurement of all six axes and then be able to put that onto your PC uh, again, put it into a control system with the analog output if needed, uh, so that if feedback was needed to, you know, lighten the hammer hit or um, change a direction, do those kind of things that could be done through that force feedback. Uh, again, the uh, we mentioned the uh, the DIN mounting and the pass through. Uh, capabilities of this product, which does come in handy when you've got that hole in the center, um, heavily used in a robotics field and, and uh, material testing. Um, and then it can be used for spacecraft repair, uh, gripper control monitoring, um, and other robotics applications, along with manufacturing processes and quality control. To Brian. Thanks, thanks, Ken. All right, so let's move to some of the load pins, shackles, tension links, and things. So um, first, uh, load pins. Uh, we have the IL, ILMP uh, line of standard and already designed load pins ready to go. Wide range of capacities from 500 kilograms all the way up to 1,500 metric tons. Um, keeper plates are supplied. Uh, these are um, IP67 uh, standard, obviously stainless steel. Um, and TEDS is an option. So 150% uh, safe overload, uh, typical 300% for ultimate load rating and performance in around the 1% range. A lot of low pin performance comes down to the quality and tolerances and the details of what the pins are fitting into, uh, both from the load introduction standpoint and the reaction phases, but uh, about a 1% device for these. And uh, again, wide range of, of uh, capacities. The website has all the dimensions laid out there. Uh, if you want to go ahead and just move forward with something that's already designed and try to get that pin as quick as possible versus um, looking at something custom. So next slide. Uh, use cases are broad because the reality is load pins can be used in uh, nearly any force application and we're selling more and more of them um, as Customers better understand how to get good performance out of them, uh, what they need to focus on from an integration standpoint. Uh, but really, any any force uh, any force application, weighing, lifting, rigging, and hoisting, as listed there, uh, load pins are a good fit for that. Um, especially also integrating into existing machines um, uh, down there at the bottom there, application machine retrofitting. So uh, very versatile, and uh, interface team of course is standing by to, to assist on uh, the application details. This application here pictured is an uh, inflatable space habitat uh, that we are supporting. Uh, this actually, uh, this depiction demonstrates that uh, the customer wanted to be able to monitor the expansion force as they inflate that. So uh, there's actually some load pins capturing, in this case, the, uh, you can consider kind of the axial load as that expands uh, through inflation. So. Um, load pins obviously need to be included in some sort of a clevis arrangement, whether it's uh, uh, something we provide or part of your existing machine. Uh, and in this case, they were wirelessly transmitting the load pin signals through our BX6BT uh, remote data logger um, and uh, then reading that via a laptop with the supplied software we provide. So, uh, so again, load pins, many applications, many uses and uh, growing, growing market. Next slide. 
the reality is most load pins are going to go into something that uh, customers have already designed or are already in the process of designing. So that means uh, we need to customize them. And uh, the majority of the pins that we um, help support and sell uh, are in custom in nature. Uh, it could be ones and twosies, or it could be uh, a custom design to be used in an OEM solution. Um, and NRE typically isn't a, a factor in this, and uh, we're very uh, quick to respond, typically looking at about a two week uh, difference, maybe uh, for an off the shelf design versus uh, a full custom solution here. So a couple things to note, uh, the options are quite broad. Um, and just like with the standard, uh, we will supply a keeper plate. Uh, of course, the options of how that keeper plate interacts with the pin or how it interacts with your structure, whether it's for rotational uh, clocking or axial retainment, uh, these are all things that we can work through. Um, but of course, then we can do submersible wireless options as depicted here with our WTS LP. Um, and the integrate, or excuse me, the, the connector options are pretty broad. We can do recess, we can do radial, we can do inline connector, uh, we can do protected, uh, and then we can provide, it's not mentioned here, but multi-axis. So if you need to have redundancy through dual bridge, maybe the same axis, or if you need discrete axes, i.e. an X and a Y type arrangement, we can provide that too. Uh, we might run into some limitations depending on the capacity and the dimensions we're working with uh, to fit all those gauges in there, but we certainly will make an attempt. Um, we have intrinsic safe solutions as well, uh, explosion proof, uh, and then we can, of course, integrate you know, customer requested connectors, pin out arrangements, uh, or TEDs if they'd like. Uh, we have a fantastic load pin configurator uh, on the website. We recommend anybody looking at uh, uh, maybe considering a load pin for it. Take a look at that. Those are some of the questions. And of course, if you'd like our application engineers to, to talk you through it or to review your application uh, and make sure we capture the necessary information, we're, we're standing by to help on that. Uh, but again, custom solutions, or excuse me, custom load pins, we do it all day, every day, and uh, they're, they're a nice and convenient way to get a measurement into something that maybe wasn't designed to, to have room for a, a big LP, for example, to begin with. So, so use cases. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, uh, really anything, but uh, specifically, obviously, they lend themselves for lifting and rigging. Um, some system health monitoring, uh, if you want to put those into an existing assembly. Um, from a PM standpoint on equipment maintenance, if you start to see vibrations or loads that are deviating from what you'd expect, um, good good opportunity for a load pin to give you early warning on that. Um, application wise, uh, we're seeing it across the board and aerospace is actually an area that's expanding uh, quite rapidly through uh, a whole new uh, focus on lifting engineering and uh, uh, specialized engineers that are uh, focusing on that area. So. Um, again, good load pins a good fit for that. So this application we highlight here, vertical lift bridge, uh, load pins are in there to monitor, uh, again, the operation of the bridge, uh, verifying if there's any change, uh, anything that is preventing it from working as expected. Uh, in this case, paired with our 920i, uh, nice NEMA rated uh, indicator for uh, the operator to do routine checks and see. Uh, of course, that can be configured with some relays if necessary, and we have options if you need to trigger or have alarms, that sort of thing. So. All right, next one. So tension links, uh, we've got uh, we've got load pins. Uh, you saw a picture earlier of shackles, right? And then if you want even better performance, uh, tension link is probably the next way to go. So um, tension link is going to be uh, essentially a calibrated solution, ready ready to uh, adapt to common uh, shackles that are out there in the uh, market. So uh, the IDs of these are designed again to fit with, depending on the model, different Crosby shackles uh, or other brands that are commonly used. Um, this, these particular products here we're highlighting, again, part of our WTS family, so wireless, uh, and these happen to be uh, aluminum. So um, the benefit there is uh, much lighter weight. Some of these, shack these tension links can get quite heavy uh, the, as you go up in capacity. Uh, especially if they're stainless, uh, so the aluminum is a is a, a nice way uh, to to make them more manageable. Uh, you can handle them a lot better if you're just doing spot checks, for example. Um, just easier to manage. So capacities uh, all the way from um, you know a little over 2,000 pounds, uh, all the way up to over 600,000 pounds of force uh, for these guys. So we've got the smaller one for the lower capacities, and then the WTS ATL for the higher capacities. Uh, still IP65 and uh, of course works with our WTS product family, uh, good battery life and uh, 
very, very proven technology uh, as it's based on the, the WTS hardware. Next slide. But just like load pins, uh, you know, tension links lend themselves for lifting, hoisting, rigging, weighing, cable, line testing. A lot of inline tension uh, really uh, is best for these. Um, as I mentioned, integrating a load pin into an existing assembly that will deliver, deliver, you know, maybe 1% type performance. Um, you start using shackles, depending if you're integrating with bobbins or not on those load pin shackles, you might be getting to, you know, three quarters of a percent, maybe a little better. Uh, whereas these guys can come in and deliver, you know, quarter to half percent pretty reliably. So uh, again, performance kind of ramps up as you move from the pins shackles to the tension links. Um, uh, here's an example of just how, again, you can integrate in a, in a basic lifting application uh, and through the, the WTS technology really have uh, unlimited options in terms of what you do with the signal. And these can all be monitored real time simultaneously in parallel. Uh, so you could have a handheld somewhere that's reading that signal uh, as well as maybe a uh, either a digital or analog out uh, that's running into um, uh, additional uh, control equipment or if you just want to go to uh, a, a laptop with the uh, USB uh, base station BS4 would capture that and of course software is included as always for WTS family next all right back to you Keith or Kim sorry no bro now we're going to talk about some new instrumentation that we have so our 9320 was uh, superseded by our brand new 9325. And uh, this product has some really nice features to it that the 9320 didn't have. Of course, the performance is even better than the 9320 was. And uh, measurement rates are now up to 2,400 samples a second with a high internal resolution 24-bit uh, and up to 500,000 counts. It's an IP64 environmental protected enclosure, and so it's a little bit more rugged than our previous 9320. And it has a number of different display modes, anything from what a 9320 used to look like, which is you know, showing the weight and net gross and which uh, you know, load cell, you had one or two load cells on that one. Now what you've got is up to six load cells that you can have on this and some display types like pass fail for instance so if you're just using this on a line you're going to do um, some pass fail testing you can put in your parameters into the supplied software and then that'll come up and tell you whether uh whether your um, test passed or failed and make your uh, production much more uh, swift Another real neat feature of this is that it's got logging and graphing software. And of course, setup uh, can also be done through the software. So it comes with the unit. You just plug it in and uh, you can make all your setup adjustments there. Then um, do your logging. You can even set min max levels on there uh, and that'll auto scale. In addition to that, it supports uh, TEDs like the 9320 did, except now we've got, instead of just TEDs 33, we can do TEDs 40 and 41. So uh, TEDs uh, 40 and 41 incorporate either a 10-point linearization or uh, using a polynomial fit. So uh, sometimes these particular units, the 9320, now the 9325, can be used in a, let's say, calibration type atmosphere because of its um, high performance spec. And uh, now you can use a polynomial fit curve inside this unit with the TEDs and get even better performance out of the combination of the two. Uh, you can do live calibration, multi-point calibration. And again, uh, as mentioned before, it has the software which plugs in via USB to your uh, computer and can do you know, logging and uh, saves and and uh, save th that testing that you're doing uh, on the PC. Uh, also, there's a standard audio alarm if that's needed in your application. Next slide. So this uh, application here is a syringe test. You can see the syringe facing down in the test stand. And as this um, actuator is pushing down on our model, SMT load cell. It's measuring the force and then uh, providing that uh, measurement to our instrument. 
and we can also be logging this uh, test straight to a PC if needed. Uh, so you can analyze the results and uh, you know store them and save them if, if you need to um, have those on file. Uh, use cases for this particular product, of course, are the test labs. Um, so if uh, R9840 isn't the best fit for you financially, this instrument's the next one up. Uh, to use in a test lab, uh, can do tension and compression testing, of course, material testing, fatigue testing, um, tablet form, uh, machine optimization, machine monitoring research, and durability and quality testing on it. Next slide. So this is our 4850 instrument. It replaced our 482, which was a battery powered instrument that had a uh, stainless steel enclosure. So this one has the same uh, feature about it. Um, it can support up to eight 350 ohm load cells, uh, full front panel configuration, uh, the different units there, pound, kg, gram, ounce. Um, very good for uh, weighing type applications, but the key feature here is it's um, battery powered, and so it it can stand on its own. And then if a, a analog output is needed, it does have that option, zero to five, four to twenty, and also built-in relays if those are needed. Here's an application using some shear beams and a uh, cattle weighing application. So basically, it's a cattle scale. Um, the four SSB beams are connected to our JB104 junction box and then connected to the 4850 uh, weight indicator. And uh, as uh, I didn't mention on the previous slide, it does have Bluetooth capability if needed, and that comes standard with the product. Um, but in this case, we're weighing the uh, animal and able to display it. And then, of course, uh, they can move in the next animal and uh, do the same. So any kind of weighing, you know, whether it's a animal scale in this case, a truck scale, uh, this is uh, perfectly suited for, especially where you're in a situation where you have isolated or remote use and need battery power. Um, outdoor uh, suited because of the uh, enclosure, the stainless steel enclosure, and some of the applications you can see, veterinary scales, chicken wing, treadmill, crude oil weighing and, and truck scales and weighing. So a lot of different places to use this um, in your application. Next slide. This is our JB1100. So this is kind of a, it has a indicator in it and it's a signal conditioner and it's a summing box all in one. So it comes in a uh, enclosure. So it's environmentally protected. Uh, again, you can put up to four load cell inputs in it and measure the total weight. Uh, not really an individual weight type device, but more for the sum of four or sum of three or sum of two uh, devices. But again, it eliminates, uh, you know, takes three instruments and turns it into one. It does have some diagnostics if you're looking at it through the serial port. And the standard analog outputs uh, that come with it are uh, 0 to 20, 4 to 20, 0 to 5, 0 to 10. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, if you buy it, you can either use it on 12 to 24 volt VDC, or we also uh, provide you with a 120 volt uh, power supply if you want to plug it into the wall. Next slide. Here's an application where we're basically uh, weighing a wave energy converter. Um, it's uh, got three shackles that are connected to this JB1100. And uh, we're looking at the total weight of those of that wave energy converter as it's being suspended by the, um, the shackles that are connected to it. That information is being fed into that uh, display and displaying the weight and also sending an analog output um, to the customer's control. 
system so they can uh, continuously monitor it in case a line breaks or something like that. They'll see a big change in the total weight and maybe send somebody out for service. Other applications can be satellite weighing, uh, wave energy, uh, medical device, and agriculture equipment. And of course, uh, because it's in the enclosure, it's really good for uh, rugged environments and uh, the nature of it is for weighing. Next slide. Got our INF1 and INF4. And so the INF1 is for a single um, app, uh, single load cell. And INF4 can go for two, three, and four different sensors that you want to connect up. Basically, uh, what this does is it uh, not only works as a signal conditioner, um, uh, in some cases, uh, an analog version is available, so it works like a straight signal conditioner where you're converting a load cell signal. You've got the display. You can display the weight that's um, shown, of course, or that's weighed, and then it also sends it off on the analog version, uh, uh, you know, plus or minus 5 volt or plus or minus 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliamp signal, but also it has a number of different protocols like EtherCAT, like Profibus, um, a Modbus, uh, RS45, uh, RS, uh, and other types of uh, many different other types. So, um, <clears throat> so you know, it's a great device for you know taking uh, a load cell signal and being able to connect with a system you're putting together that may have EtherCAT or uh, Ethernet IP, and to have that communicate directly with your application. Next slide. Uh, this one we're showing a cobot, so that's a uh, robot that works with a human intervention. It has one of our uh, convex BT load cells in the gripper, and so that's measuring the force uh, that's uh, the gripper is seeing. And then it's connected directly to an INF1 since we have a single uh, transmitter. Uh, we're using the INF1, and then that can communicate with uh, the customer system. Uh, in this case, we can say, well, they're using Ethernet IP, so the load cell uh, is seeing a certain force. It's communicating that to the INF1 and then communicating it through Ethernet IP to the uh, control system that's running the cobot. Uh, other cases for this are uh, machine integration, automated equipment, various communication protocols, which I've mentioned, and then connecting to a PLC system, which is uh, very common for uh, depending on the protocol type that's picked. And then scales, Cal labs, uh, warehouses, production lines, and manufacturing machinery or some other applications this can be used with. Next, we now have the IF500. So this is kind of a, a step below the CX box. Of course, our CX box is our transfer standard that you can use to perform a traceable calibration on instrumentation. This is more like a troubleshooting tool, but a high end. So one of the neat conveniences of this is it's a, a load cell simulator that you can actually use the switches on the front, as you can see, to set a millivolt per volt value. So in a lot of cases, when you're using an instrument like this, you have to do ratioing. So let's say my load cell is 1.3 millivolt per volt, but the next switch I have is 2 millivolt per volt or 1 millivolt per volt. Now I have to ratio my load cell output, my expectation of the load, let's say in pounds, to that millivolt per volt output to an even number, which would be a one or a two. In this case, we could actually put in the number 1.1 millivolt per volt, and you would be testing and expecting the load that your load cell is, your capacity, let's say it was a 1K, you could be expecting 1K output on your instrument with the 1.1 millivolt per volt that this simulator is putting out. So it's very handy 
uh, um, and uh, less chance for error when you're doing that system check or, you know, um, and if you don't need a, a, call, a traceable uh, setup, you could use uh, this instrument as well to uh, set up your uh, instrument. Uh, some of the other um, features of this, it goes all the way up to plus or minus five millivolt per volt. Uh, it's got no batteries in it, so you're going to be powering it by the instrument excitation. It's low noise and highly high stability high stability there we go and uh, it can store up to 10 settings um next slide so again can be used for calibration checks uh lab technician work tool we use them here all the time uh, to help troubleshoot if need be um device monitoring uh, pre-test post-test validation can do it to educate team members. Uh, we use it a lot for uh, doing training videos and uh, load cell uh, testing labs can use it as well. Make sure instruments are functioning correctly. Next slide. Uh, this is our 9812. So this is a, a part of our WTS family. Uh, this is a panel meter that uh, we can mount into different enclosures. It has uh, a nice six-digit display, easy to see. It has four uh, relays in it, so you can set to uh, uh, trigger different events to occur based on the weight that it's seeing. And of course, uh, if we're transmitting from a wireless shackle or a wireless load cell, um, it's uh, coming across that network. This is reading it and then helping perform those actions. And of course, it's uh, compatible with all our WTS products, which is one of the features of buying wireless from Interface. Next slide. So this is a, a example of uh, one of these uh, being used in a uh, uh, portable system. We've got uh, multiple of these 9812s in the left-hand portion of the case. Um, the load cells, wireless load cells are in the right side of the case. And, you know, you could put this into, a, 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 let's say, a, a load cell scale. Um, be weighing the four different load cells, see the weight of each load cell on, on uh, each one of the displays there. And be triggering events uh, needed uh, by using the relays in the system. So uh, it's one of the things that we do at Interface really well is put together these Pelican cases and uh, they can be powered off of a battery um, or plugged into the wall, whatever is uh, most convenient. And of course, you can see we've got our base station. So if we need to uh, have the transmission of these captured onto a uh, laptop computer, uh, it can do that at the same time as it's uh, displaying onto the 9812 indicators. And again, on site testing, outdoor testing, uh, mobile force system, and, and remote tie down monitoring, which we've uh, done before. And these things are great to travel around with, you know, helicopters or whatever. Next slide. This is our BSC 4D BT portable Bluetooth uh, data logger. So this basically can connect up to, let's say, a multi-axis load cell or four different load cells um, and transmit wirelessly from your application to the PC so that you can use our BlueDAC software to capture the measurements that are taking place. So where a, a wire isn't an option to connect from that application to the PC, this would fill that void. Um, long distance Bluetooth interface, got an IP65 housing, can accept inputs for not only millivolt per volt and voltage, zero to five volt, but for PT1000 devices, quarter bridge and half bridge options. So if somebody's putting together strain gauge applications, they could use something like this to transmit wirelessly. Uh, four inputs and outputs, 
to, uh, of course, to the uh, PC and the data rate up to about 450 hertz. This is an application that's using a three axis load cell to measure a prosthetic. Um, as the uh, force is uh, generated onto the to the load cell, the BSC4D is uh, capturing those readings and then transferring them to the PC so that uh, they can monitor, you can log graph, and again, go back and use the software to analyze the data to see if you can improve the performance of that particular prosthetic or if it's performing the way you expect it to, to make sure it's safe for the user. So uh, as we mentioned before, onboard data logging, remote data transfer, uh, you can use uh, one three-axis load cell using three of the channels. You can use four different load cells and connect in uh, to this as well and transmit it wirelessly. It's got, um, you know, you can use strain gauges on it and many different testing types, hydrofoil, uh, printer cartridge, in motion rail weighing if needed. Next slide. This is our BSC-1 HD. This is a single channel uh, amplifier and PC interface module. So, and it has a display on it. It has everything. It's 24-bit internally. Um, as, uh, let's say, a load cell is uh, reading a force, it can be displayed. It can be logged directly to your PC and uh, captured on the BlueDAC software. And it can send an analog output, uh, 0 to 10 volt, to your system as well. Uh, all that in one device. Uh, up to 200,000 display digit resolution. And again, compatible with the Blue DAC software. And uh, also there's option for can open if, if that's a need, maybe in the auto industry or uh, your company's adopted uh, that kind of a digital uh, interface there. And trigger outputs are available if you need to trigger some other kind of activity. Uh, that's a digital output that's available. Next slide. And this shows uh, similar to the other cobot we were looking at where it has a gripper on it uh, with a convex BT. And then that's connected to our BSC4, or excuse me, the BSC1, sorry about that, the BSC1 HD. And then that's communicating directly to the system via wire. So a little bit different uh, than our previous instrument it's not wireless this would use a wire but at the same time it's displaying the force it's sending that analog output and even could do it through a, a CAN bus if it was needed um, used and on machine configuration active monitoring and it's a highly versatile in, instrument for sure and um, you know worthwhile investment and then there's some of the applications, robot, space box simulator, and cobot pro programming. Next slide. Our new 9840C. So this is a, uh, for those of you who are using our 9840 in your labs, sometimes you're wondering, how can I read and write TEDs um, based on the calibration that I just performed using the 9840 instrument? This is the answer right here. So uh, has all of our high level uh, calibration lab uh, grade features that our uh, other 9840s have. And we have these in a lot of uh, big labs all over the world uh, using to validate their instrumentation and things before they perform their tests. Um, but it also, this also has the ability to uh, read and write uh, TEDs uh, TEDs 33, 40, and 41, uh, very similar to the 9325. And uh, this one can also uh, store, if you wanted to store calibrations, uh, you could store up to 20 load cells in it, 10-point uh, linearization. Again, that comes with uh, one of the TEDs options. And um, can take, uh, um, in the, this particular version, uh, can take two uh, inputs, up to two inputs, and uh, six wire load cells. 
and uh, very uh, fast and scalable analog outputs needed uh, for it. Uh, and on the back, there's two switches to change the uh, shunt cal. So as you're performing a calibration, this instrument will automatically grab a shunt cal based on the value you selected in the back with the switch. Next. So this is a force feedback actuator. And basically what we're doing is we have one of our 1200 series load cells in line with the actuator. And we're doing a, a test of that actuator, um, applying a force to our load cell and then giving feedback uh, back to the system on how that performed, how that actuator performed. Uh, we can do that by um, taking the readings uh, from the 9840 and then through its analog output, sending that information back to the control system, which is uh, capturing and monitoring the testing activity. Again, a Cal Lab is a perfect uh, application for this OEM end of, OEM end of line testing. Uh, same functionality as the 9840. And this is, uh, of course, a force feedback actuator test. And you can do it with other hydraulic applications as well. Next slide. Brian, off to you. All right, new accessories. And we've got a couple, uh, you know, some of these are new, some of these are newly organized, I'll say. So we'll kick it off with enclosures. We have a full range of enclosures to accommodate uh, uh, you know, all the different instrumentation, uh, which would normally be panel meters, maybe, uh, that we offer. Um, we offer the enclosures to obviously protect the, the investments here, but also maybe to consolidate, to organize, to uh, provide special purpose enclosures like you can see there with the one on the right. Um, but basically uh, everything from, you know, NEMA 4, uh, either single, multiple displays to bench top, as you can see on the right there. We even have internal mounts in case you want to keep the buttons away from prying fingers. Uh, we can embed the, the panel meters inside the enclosures where there's not even access to that zero conditioning, basically. Um, we can do stainless steel for NEMA Type 4X, Type 12, IP66, uh, and then a lot of special purpose. Maybe uh, maybe the enclosure needs to be a case, for example, right? As you saw in some of the examples earlier. So wide range, we've got a team standing by to either quote standard or to come up with a full custom uh, if you'd like. Base kits. So uh, bases. Bases are super important with low profiles to ensure that you're going to be delivering and getting the same performance, at least specify on the data sheets. Um, oftentimes you may not be able to utilize one. You've got to just integrate it directly into uh, take the standard low profile or uh, pancake load cell, bolt it into into your machine. Uh, but bases are always recommended. Um, and a lot of people don't know, too, that if maybe they forgot them or uh, have some other load cells laying around that don't have bases. We sell full kits that will allow you to retrofit, install that on there. It includes the hardware. So if it's a compression only unit, it'll come with cap screws for the counterboard holes that come on those types of load cells or standard hex head if it's a standard universal load cell. But uh, our, our bases are heat treated. Um, uh, I think it's what is it, Rockwell 43 hardness. I think we try to maintain um, two ten thousands total flatness. You know these things. A uh, hard flat base is a foundation for a, a load cell to perform well and, and, and repeatedly. Uh, but again, we've got a wide range that'll match all of our existing uh, low profile load cells out there. Uh, we can offer bases that uh, that offer higher overload compression, overload protection. Um, standard, they'd be about one hundred twenty five percent, one hundred fifty percent safe overload on a load cell. But if you get the compression overload protection that can go up to five times or three times the rate of capacity in the compression mode, depending on what the size is of that load cell. Lower capacity, smaller ones are vented to ensure that that seal between or the, at least the interface between the pancake and the base isn't introducing any additional pressure to influence the measurement. So we vent those. You can actually see that in the in the picture there. It's that little vertical uh, hole uh, inboard of the ring. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, we've got a whole kit ready to go. We've got a brochure online which summarizes uh, what we offer there, our data sheet, I should say. Next, couplings. Mentioned the importance of these earlier too. Uh, we always try to to ask how you're hooking up to your torque uh, load cell. We want to try to quote these where we can just to ensure that a you get the performance you expect, but also b you get the longevity you expect out of the sensor. So we've got uh, couplings available really for all of our <laughs> nearly all of our. Uh, rotary torque sensors, including our ATQ model. Um, 
And uh, depending on how you try to mount to it, we've got either single flex or double flex, right? If it's a floating mount, uh, you'd want to make sure you use single flex on each side. Uh, if it's pedestal or a foot mount, uh, you'd be looking at double flex couplings. But uh, we've got keyed, we've got clamp, um, uh, we've got uh, compression. Uh, again, they're they are all selected and ready to go, uh, depending on the shaft diameter of the sensor you're trying to pair it to, as well as the rated capacity. So no need to modify anything, and we've got a full brochure up uh, as well uh, for these. So don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you have any questions. Uh, AEs are standing by, uh, or of course, if you are looking to get a rotary torque, please let us include those. Ken. All right, now we're gonna talk about systems system level stuff and uh you know interface has gotten really really good at this uh and provided a lot of solutions for our customers and that's because we've got some really great um skilled technicians working for us and engineering teams so um the data act pack is kind of a way to offer a full solution to our customers that are looking to okay i want to buy a system that uses force or that does torque or has multi-axis and but i'd like to get you know a computer with it i'd like to get the full system the load cells i need make sure they're all working together talking to each other so that when i get it when i get this product from you basically i'm doing my mechanical assembly into my application and everything else is going to work as planned maybe i have to press a tear button or something like that because of a preload that I didn't have before, but everything is scaled and working together and can even come with a traceable cert if needed so that you'll have confidence when you get that system up and going. So uh, again, it's a full system solution. You can see we've got pictured here some uh, rugged computer there. That's a, a model PIPO um, that we can offer, but we could even incorporate a computer that you might prefer into a solution. And, uh, you know, depending on which product type that you need, you know, you would get, let's say, our, uh, if you got our BX8, then you would get a Blue Deck version, which would come with, you know, the instrument that you need, the, um, the software loaded onto the PC. You'd have uh, um, all those things tested, working together. And even if needed a, a cert that said we put everything together, tested it all, and it's ready for your use. And that goes along with all of our other offerings. So the Blue Deck is kind of a wired solution. We have the WTS, which is our wireless product. We have our TUSB, which is for our rotary torque. We have some uh, integrated um, PC interface modules into our, our torque. Uh, we also have our uh, separate modules that connect our INF USB, which can talk directly to uh, load cells into a PC. We can put together solutions with that. We have our DIG USB, which is a kind of a lower cost data acquisition uh, PC uh, interface module that can connect directly to your sensor and to a PC. And then, of course, as mentioned before, we got our 9325, which comes with its software. So. All these are different options for you to buy as a complete system if that would make your job easier. Next slide. So we have uh, custom wireless, which we've talked about here and there along the, this presentation, and really a strong suit of interface. You know, we're one of the few companies that can say that we have shackles, load pins, load cells, uh, things that we can adapt to existing load cells, um, instruments, uh, antennas, all these things that you would need to put together an entire wireless system. We can even uh, take up to 100 load cells and have them talk to a gateway and then uh, go through a a product and have it talk directly to your network. So we have all these capabilities to put together a full wireless system for you and your applications. All you got to do is, you know, kind of sketch it out on a, a pad of paper, make sure you got all your details, and then give a call to one of our application engineers. And then we can uh, uh, have them uh, work with you to work out all the details. 
but then we can put it all together here, here scale it all together, uh, build a custom enclosure if needed, um, and then send it off to you. So you're just installing it into your application and using it. So make your life a lot easier. And pretty good distance, six to 800 meters in most cases, clear line of sight. Next slide. And then we have these custom and OEM solutions. So uh, basically what we've done here, uh, we're just picturing the one on the left. We had a customer that wanted a key control, so only a supervisor could make the change. But basically we have uh, our model 9812 uh, in the enclosure on the left with a light bar on the top. And as you turn the switch, it changes which program is inside, which set of parameters is inside of that 9812. So we've stored two different sets of parameters. The supervisor turns it to, let's say, switch A. And when they when they do that, that set of parameters is there. And then the red colored light on the left will go off when the triggers are hit. And then if the supervisor changes their mind and says, now we want to work on product B and we have a different set of parameters, they go in there and turn the switch to switch B with the key. And then the alarm goes off based on that different set of parameters. So, um, but they just uh, explained the concept to our application engineer and regional directors. They recorded that information, took it to, uh, we took it to our custom solutions team, and we were able to put together an instrument, a solution that met their needs. Um, you see in the middle, you've got, uh, that's a customized version of a, of a uh, com uh, compression load saw that we make. And it's connected over there to our um, BX8 instrument. Uh, we can do, you know, like I say, any kind of customized load cell with a, an instrument solution. In this case, you can go talk to our BlueDAC uh, software if needed. And then the one on the right is uh, uh, an actual system that we built uh, to do tension uh, monitoring for a helicopter. And that particular one had uh, a number of different displays with a, a number of different load cells. You can see the load cells in there. They're a, uh, an S-type load cell with a custom hardware uh, mounts on each side of them. Um, they were scaled to those uh, five 9890s that are in that uh, instrument on the left. And then those um, were then connected to the customer's application which is a helicopter to measure the force on a tie down for a helicopter. And one of the unique features of this instrument is it's got a uh, battery power that's underneath. And so it can power those instruments for up to 24 hours and can be charged by three different power sources, which is 110 volt, 28 volt, and 220 volt. So a uh, customer came to us with a list of requirements and we were able to produce this and uh, they were able to use it in their application successfully. So these are just some of the ideas that you can bring to Interface and we can work with you, work out all the details and then provide you with a, a solution. And you can imagine how much more you can get done with your engineering teams if you're able to offload this kind of work to us. They could be working on other projects, which makes them a lot more efficient. And you're, you know, and uh, we were both win. It's a win-win situation. Brian? All right, thanks, Ken, and uh, appreciate everyone sticking with us. I know we went a little around time. We're wrapping this up here, so just a couple more, a couple more comments. So, planning and testing tips. Uh, you know, really comes down to a matter of understanding and thinking about what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, these are just a list of questions you can start asking yourself uh, before testing, or as you're even working on current testing to be thinking about, or if you want to reach out and have our AEs help help walk you through this process, it's an option as well. But you know, it starts with understanding what are you measuring? Um, what are the number of cycles? Is this truly a fatigue rated requirement or not? For example, to interface fatigue is, you know, hundreds of millions fully reverse cycles. And if you're not doing that, then probably good or you can always upsize. So uh, what are the number of, of cycles? What's the environment that can have a lot of different facets to it, whether it's temperature, whether it's moisture concerns, whether it's corrosive elements. Uh, whether it's electrical noise, mechanical noise, all these things can Im impact your ability to get a good measurement. Uh, how, you, how do you plan to use the measurement data? Are you just collecting it uh, isolated? Are you expecting to feed this back into an active system? Uh, are you expecting to take that and to do additional math on it, for example? 
uh, or additional processing. So things to be thinking about, that's going to determine what kind of snow conditioning or, and or um, uh, displays uh, or data capture devices you may need. Uh, what are your requirements for mounting and installation? Again, that could be simple physical fit. How do you fit the sensor into your into your test setup, into your machine? Uh, that could maybe drive towards a custom solution or a custom load pin, for example. Uh, but it also is true for your instrumentation, as you saw. Are you going to need enclosures? Are you going to need longer cable runs? Which now we need to start thinking about six wire and or uh, high level signal conditioning, right? So uh, how will you be connecting your devices to instrumentation? Same kind of thought process. Is this going to be nearby? Is this going to be uh, on machine where you then need wireless? Uh, do you need special cables? Do you need um, conduit uh, armored cable, for example? Um, how will you be connecting your devices to instrumentation? Um, yeah, a lot of elements there. Uh, how are you storing the data or where are you storing the data? Are you uh, looking to just dump it into a computer? Are you looking to have it on board onto your test article? Um, uh, and then uh, are you looking to report it? Uh, do you need software to either uh, create uh, custom reports? Do you need software to combine channels and do additional math? Do you need software to be able to take two discrete or different channels, overlay them, uh, synchronize, for example, on the same time scale? Um, all things that will drive the decisions on the sensors, the cabling and connection, the signal conditioning, the panel displays, and or potential data loggers. But the good news is interface is here to help on all fronts. Next slide. Choose an interface. Uh, interface has built a, a, a brand. Uh, on trust, uh, they built it on performance, uh, they built it on solutions. And the solutions side, uh, not only the uh, ability to guide and support through the process to identify the solution, uh, but also to be able to provide a wide range of solutions and have a wide breadth of, of being able to take any sort of force or torque measurement, get that measurement, uh, and then provide uh, any, any possible form of data from that measurement and make sure that you're supported from uh, installation, integration, all the way to uh, Cal reports, for example, on one of our Cal frames. So why choose? Why interface? Uh, we design our load cells for precision. We customize, as you heard, still doing two new option codes a day. Uh, our engineers are plenty busy, that is for sure. Uh, quality and accuracy, that's what people expect with interface branded product. Uh, detailed specifications. Not only do we provide the specifications in a documentation, but more often than not, we're testing the products in process to much, much more stringent specifications than competitors out there. Uh, we've we've got wide range of solutions across all industries. Interface is pretty unique in that we uh, support all markets, any market type, um, and we, we've done so for nearly 56 years. So. Engineering, manufacturing expertise all ties into being able to have confidence again that we're here to help you get the right solution and get you the measurement you're looking for. So thanks everybody for joining. I um, know we went a little bit long here. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions that popped up, Jamie. No questions. Provide a lot of great information and we thank everybody. All right. Ken, anything to close on? Just thank everybody for attending, and uh, we're really excited about these new products and, of course, about the ones we've already been selling in addition to these. So thank you for being a customer, and we're here to help. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Appreciate it.